cast your mind back about a decade ago and Hyundai were flogging a five-door Elantra. On this edition of Test Drive, it's back. In the compact car segment, the hatchback has been making serious inroads. Ford, Mazda, Kia, Subaru and Volkswagen all offer five-door hatches. The addition of the GT to the Elantra lineup addresses the biggest hole in Hyundai's portfolio. Where it differs from its four-door sibling is size. The wheelbase is 50mm shorter, while the length is a whopping 230mm shorter. Neither, however, puts a serious crimp in the versatility. Talk versatility and you'll find plenty of it in this GT. To begin with, 23 cubic feet of cargo space with the seats in the upright position. You'll also find a privacy cover. Now if you fold the seats down, which does require lifting the base up and removing the headrest, you end up with a flat floor and 51 cubic feet of cargo space. The problem? What do you do with the headrest? Well, there are some Mickey Mouse loops, but frankly they don't work. The GT is powered by a 1.8 litre four cylinder engine that puts out 148 horsepower and 131 pound feet of torque. Now, this is enough power to motivate 1,342 kilograms with surprising authority. The engine also manages to remain quiet and refined even when it's worked in the upper reaches of the rev range. Now, this is an important consideration because to get the best out of this engine, it does need to be revved. The cabin of this GT has been very nicely finished off indeed, especially if you go with the SE Tech package. When you do that, great leather seats that are very comfortable and the driver's happens to be an eight-way power seat. You'll also find a navigation system and a loud and proud audio system to go along with the panoramic roof panel. Now, if there is a nit to pick, this thing is a GT. Now, usually GT denotes something that's rather sporty. That being the case, where are my paddle shifters? The tester arrived with Hyundai's six-speed automatic transmission and its manual mode. It slips through the gears smoothly and it's willing to kick down when the driver floors the gas pedal. In the end, the Elantra managed to scoot from rest to 100k in a respectable nine seconds. Not outstanding, but more than enough to deal with the cut and thrust of the morning commute. For a hatchback, the GT actually has half decent sight lines. However, there is a plus and a minus. Now, the minus has to do with the side view mirrors. Quite simply, there's not enough adjustment built in, so I never could get the mirror set properly for me. On a more positive note, behind that Hyundai logo, there is a backup camera. Now, hiding it keeps the lens clean. It's the sort of thinking you expect of BMW, not Hyundai. It's just too bad that the side view mirrors aren't as well thought through as that backup camera. The GT rides on front struts and an anti-roll bar with a torsion beam axle holding up the back bumper. In terms of its handling, there is a definite must. The larger 215 45R17 tires that come with the SE models. While these do little to counter the body roll that was evident through the pylons, they did provide much better lateral grip, which pushes understeer out to the point where it's a non-issue. The complaint is the steering. In spite of being able to adjust the level of assist in three stages, it still feels rather numb across the board. Blame the electric assist. The addition of the Elantra GT to the lineup is a welcome one. It's got decent performance, great economy, and the right sort of versatility. The problem, however, could be pricing. While this vehicle does start at under $20,000, this vehicle is over 26. Now, to my mind, that demands another letter, GTI. 